Hey guys, this is Olivier. You're still at the IoT Show live from IoT Stars at Embedded World, Nuremberg 2024. And I'm here with Marcello. It's hard to say. I like it. Marcello, how are you, my friend? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm trying to get your mic is working. So, Marcello, what are you? What are you doing these days? So, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Arduino. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've been in IoT for, uh, oh gosh, a long time at this point. So yes, you have. In different roles, sir. Yeah. Right, uh, sometimes so also together with you. Yes. Uh, but, you know, mostly in the software and embedded side. So suffice to say, you know a thing or two about IoT in general, and everything else goes around. You build products yourself, device, cloud, both, etc. Perfect. I like that. My first question to you, because you know IoT so well, is what is the most interesting, innovative, or stupid IoT device you've ever encountered? That's a wonderful question. I will go with a mix of all the, you know, <laughs> the model. Okay. It was actually the very first IoT device that I've ever connected in my career. Okay. Right, uh? And it was a muscle cleaner. And believe it or not, uh, there are companies out there that are building <laughs> muscle cleaners. Uh? Okay. Right, uh? And of course, right, uh, they have motors and they have equipment and they need to be maintained. Uh? Okay. And predictive maintenance is actually a thing. Because if your muscle cleaner is not working, uh, those muscles are not cleaning themselves. <laughs> okay, like that's a good one because it's useful for people who love muscles, right? And eating this. And I have pictures to demonstrate that. It feels yeah. stupid, but it's not. Exactly. That's fantastic. Okay, cool. Okay, so you are working for Arduino. How long has it been now here with them? It's been, uh, I would say, a uh, year and a half. A year probably. and a half. You moved back to Italy. I did, indeed, from how's, the US. How's Italy. it going there? It's great. It's great. Also, it's great that you know back at home in the U.S. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of you know still do I'm back missing your your post about you know bears and whatever. <laughs> now you're writing in Italian with some fine ways, but uh, I know that you can't understand that. So yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. So Marcello, let me ask you this: People have a, still, unfortunately, that perception that we're doing is about makers and hobbyists and so on. That's it. I know you you're answering that question a lot, but I want you to tell me with maybe a different angle or not. Why would someone want to go with Arduino Pro to, to build a commercial product? Absolutely. So I think that, first of all, there are two ways to use Arduino in a professional market. Right? Uh, there is uh, using Arduino for professional prototyping. And I would say that that is kind of you know, the hero scenario. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then there is using Arduino to scale a production deployment uh, of IoT device. Okay. And the two things are actually connected. Right. Uh, okay. uh, with using Arduino for prototyping in professional environments, uh, you know, you can do, you can achieve the same goal with a fraction of the complexity, a fraction of the time, a fraction of the cost, uh, because basically Arduino is uh, abstracting without obfuscating uh, all the complexity from the electronics uh, to the soft and better software stack okay. Okay. first. Yeah. But then of course, right, uh, for the right type of deployment, uh, right, you can go cheap down design, right, uh, and you can basically refactor everything. Or uh, you can pick uh, from the Arduino catalog of pro devices, which are you know thought uh, for professional and scale deployments uh, in terms okay. of components, support, uh, software, everything. Uh, scale. To just scale, yeah. right? Uh, just to take uh, you know lift and shift, uh, right? Like we used to say in cloud, yeah, uh, yes. your code uh, from your prototyping environment to your production environment, uh, if you want, even over there. Okay. So effectively, you are cutting down uh, the time and the effort uh, of moving from. Uh, pilot to prototyping to production okay. from months or years to literary weeks. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good that's a good reason. I like that. Uh, you have this Opta device. You have like several types of devices in the pro line that that, that serve different purposes, address different scenarios. Uh, one thing I like is that you're also making the right deals or the right you know, partnerships. Like one of blues is super interested. Like we have Brendan like earlier on today. That's a super interesting one. Blues is simplifying connectivity. You guys are simplifying the development of embedded devices. Absolutely, it is, right? Yeah, it's a it's a perfect match, especially Opta, which is our product line for industrial automation. Yeah. So it's slightly different from the traditional Arduino. Yeah. This is not a board, right? It's a finished product that yeah. you just put on your panel, right? And you control machines, uh, you kind of you know monitor and that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a seamless device uh, that you just have to configure, yeah. right? Uh, not to develop, right? Uh, if you want connectivity, you just literally right, uh, connect uh, a Blue's uh, right, yeah. connectivity module and you're online. Yeah, the same way actually people doing PLCs are doing in you know, putting the I.O. modules next to each other. It's all the same exact mode. So exactly. they're, familiar. they're familiar with that. We are trying to make automation plug and play. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Let's beep that. Let's not dig into that. <laughs> not tonight. You know. <laughs> last last short one for you. So you just talked about a more industrial scenario, right? You also have something with matter that started some time ago. How is it going and what are you addressing in terms of audience effects? Absolutely. So Matter is an interesting device. It, uh, it started as a maker-focused product, yeah, yeah. but then we actually realized that there was a huge interest uh, right from the community of using Arduino and Matter yeah. to actually prototype and scale to production right actual devices, actual products. Yeah, right? yeah. So effectively, what we're trying to do in collaboration with Silicon Labs uh, is to bring Matter to the Arduino ecosystem right, uh, by leveraging uh, you know, the Silicon Labs technology and having a physical library yeah. that can you know, help uh, developers to just integrate Matter in their Arduino project uh, without even knowing what Matter is. There is also an additional benefit. Uh, the Arduino NanoMatter, which is the product that we have, yeah. is, a, you know, is a little board. Uh, it's the only prototyping board that is actually certified for Matter, which means that if you take that, you put in your product, uh, yeah. you, didn't, you don't have to go through the Matter certification. Uh, you're, already, right, uh, you're already certified. Exactly. And so your, your, your device right, yeah, will yeah. pop up in, yeah. uh, on your phone. Yeah. Uh, you, sent, you sent me one, and I saw all your... A little, uh, you know, review on that one. So I'm working on that. I was facing a little problem, and we don't, we won't enter into the details here. But uh, something that I'm fairly sure it's solved by now. And uh, you also I, have I'm the community like, preview of I the product. I think I have something mistaken. very early, but I like to break these ones. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Marcello, can share seeing you. Likewise. Ci vediamo down there. I like to make that Italian and <laughs> English. Everyone, stay tuned because we still have one more guest here on the IHO tonight. Uh, before I let you go. So it's going to be an interesting one. Michelle, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me.